Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. So lately as I've been hanging around the house, I've been wearing leggings a lot. That's something I didn't expect, but I bought a couple pairs of these uh, a while ago, or actually not too long ago, just as it was starting to get cold, and I was trying to convince myself that I liked to do running. Uh, I've since then come to terms with the fact that I don't like running, but I was trying to get into the habit of running, and it started to get cold outside, and I ran into this problem of, uh, I thought, hey, what do people do when it's really cold outside, like freezing temperatures and, and around there or below? What do they do when they need to go out and run, and it's really cold, right? I thought, so do they just go, tough it out, and, uh, you know, just let their legs be cold? Uh, or, I mean, really, if your legs get cold, your whole body can get colder because, you know, your, your your legs can act like, like a couple of radiators and let out a lot of your body heat. But I guess if you just wait for a while, if you're running, you can generate a lot of body heat. So that's one approach. Um, but so usually when I run, I just would wear shorts. So I thought, so I can either wear shorts or wear long shorts, a.k.a. pants. Or I can wear something over the shorts or something under the shorts. And I ended up, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, I've seen people at like, when I've, back when I lived in Chicago a few times, you know, uh, the Chicago Marathon would go right by my house, you know, I've, and, and, and probably in like movies or something. I've seen people wear leggings uh, while running under their shorts. So I thought, yeah, let me try that approach. So I bought a couple of pairs of leggings for running. Uh, and then I promptly decided not to do, to, to do running anymore. Uh, let me pause the commentary here for a moment, and we will come back to this line of thought at a later moment. celebratory moment here, if you'll allow me. I would like to formally announce that on December 19th, I officially took a moment to celebrate my 11,000th, 111st day of being alive. I'm going to make a wish. Very nice. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's been a good, it's been a good first 11,111 days. So I appreciate it. Thanks for sticking around. All right. Welcome, everyone. Before we get into the actual drawing, we do have a couple orders of business. Um, I do want to show you this mug I got for Christmas. Is it focusing? My camera wants to focus on my face, so I have to cover up my face with the mug. Got that from a friend who obviously uh, understands my goals and sense of humor. And then on the other side, it's, com it's identical. All right, and item of business number two, I want to show you my burgeoning and steadily growing collection of, I don't know what you would call these, Allen wrenches, hex keys. I've gotten all of these since I moved here to this new house. Um, each one of these has come with some like set of like something I've bought, you know, and they always send you one of these to assemble something like a set of patio furniture or a, like a chair or like an ottoman or something. It's just so, so weird how I have so many of these now, and almost all of them are the exact same uh, size. 
So I just thought it was interesting that I had so many of these and I had to show someone. That's all. And then before we get started, I have a cool thing here. Uh, at the beginning of December, I spent dollars to commission a portrait of me from one of my friends and uh, an artist, a, a very skilled water, watercolor artist that uh, you may be familiar with who I've mentioned on this channel before, uh, Scott Teplin. And so I haven't looked at it yet to see uh, what he made. Okay, and included here, he specifically said he included this part where he tested out all the brushes and colors and stuff, which if I want to frame it, I think he said I could either like fold it behind it or I guess cut it off if I really wanted to, but I would prefer to fold it behind it. And here we go, the unveiling. Check it out, everyone. Let me see if I can make this face. So anyone who's watched the channel for a while has known that I have, uh, and multiple times in my life, had long curly locks like this. Wait, I'm gonna try to make this face, okay? Did I get it at least a little bit? Anyways, it's beautiful. Thank you, Scott. I love it. It's uh, extremely, <laughs> it's wonderful. Glad to have it here in person, like the real thing. One of your watercolor drawings. So definitely go check Scott out. Uh, if you haven't, if you're not following him on Instagram or whatever, go do that. I'll put a link to his stuff in the description. Oh, oh well, look, here's one of, here's another drawing. I don't know who, is this? So is this like a bonus? I don't know. A little bonus drawing there, un unwater colored. You can see, I think this is, there are pencil lines here. So maybe this is what his drawings look like before they are water colored. Anyway, okay, let's draw now. Let's just draw. Thank you again, Scott, for this wonderful portrait. I love it. It's beautiful in the most horrific way possible, of course, which is what I was dreaming of. Okay, okay, so back to talking about the leggings, the important stuff. Oh yeah, so I, I bought them for leg, I bought them for running, so I haven't used them for that really. I don't think I ever once wore the leggings while running, but thankfully I have worn the leggings several times while walking just under my pants. I guess that does make the leggings underpants in that uh, strictly technical sense of the word, but I do just around the house wear them as, I wear them over my underpants. Because I, if I wear underpants under the leggings, then it makes me feel like I can wear them for more days in a row without washing them, without making, without me feeling like they're getting dirty. Basically, leggings are everything I love about pants, but better. The leggings are pants perfected. Uh, really, I just love wearing pants. There, there's something about that they feel cozy. It's like, they're like blankets you can wear around your legs, right? They're like little leg huggers. They're just very cozy. And uh, when I walk around, some, I mean, occasionally I do, maybe, maybe it has something to do with the temperature I keep my house at, where I like, I like an excuse to like, bundle up and wear pants and put on a hoodie, right? I don't really like sitting around in shorts and a t-shirt for some reason. There's something cozier to me about wearing pants and socks and a, and a hoodie. I don't know. I guess I could just bump up the temperature a little bit, but I would still probably try to put on pants and then just be upset that I was sweating or something. But, but yeah, 
But then you take leggings and they're like pants, but pants only touch your legs in some places, right? They're not snug like leggings. First of all, I don't know the difference between leggings and yoga pants. Is it just a a naming thing? I don't know. Anyways, also I noticed one reason I think maybe leggings are so warm is because when I go walking in them and uh, they're under my pants, there's like this tiny bit with each step, especially like on my thighs, there's this tiny bit of friction. They shift around a tiny bit. And I think maybe that generates a little bit of heat. Each step they like shift back and forth, uh, maybe just like one millimeter, just like, shh, shh, shh. I mean, it doesn't make a sound like that, but uh, I don't know. I really like them. They're comfortable. And I just, you know, maybe one day it'll be, you know, it, it became, I feel like just in the last like 10 years or so, it became more popular and acceptable for women to wear uh, leggings and yoga pants around in public and stuff. So maybe that'll happen for men too. I'm not sure. I would be okay with that. I don't know. Maybe it's a little different. But yeah, I've been walking a lot so far. In December, I started tracking my walking on Strava. And so far, since I started tracking it about one week in, about one week into December, I've walked 58.7 miles on across 27 different walks. Um, I usually walk about two miles, sometimes three miles. And this is only because I've convinced myself to, not convince myself, but I started listening to um, like philosophy audiobooks while walking. And I missed one day, that was Christmas Eve. But since I started, I don't think I missed any days. Even though, even though looking at this line graph, look at this line graph right here. You know, that, that shows my progress right there. Uh, up to the time of me recording this. Uh, but I think it's important for me with my habits to not tell myself like, Peter, I need to go do this. I need to walk. I need to draw. Because I like for drawing, I don't tell myself like, Peter, I have to draw every day. I just draw when I feel like it, when I want to, when I have something bubbling up within myself. Likewise, I've just been going walking because I feel like I want to go walk. And sometimes I just want to go walk because I want to listen to more of the audiobook. And I really only listen to the audiobook uh, when I'm walking. Because that's not really the only time I can concentrate on it. I just like walk along and I stare at the cracks in the road in front of me. Uh, I also listen to audiobooks sometimes if I'm doing something like washing the dishes or folding the laundry. But so far it's been working really good. I'm like, I'm like 25 hours into this book called, um, it's called The History of Western Philosophy by Bertrand Russell. It's pretty good so far. Out of 38 hours, it's a 38-hour audiobook, and I have 14 hours left, so I think I'm like three-fifths of the way through. Also, in other news, I'm using this shampoo right now. It's like, it's on the, it says coconut milk. Before that, I was using a shampoo that said coconut curls, which I really liked. Uh, because it smelled a lot like coconut. I really like coconut scented shampoo. Okay. And I don't know, this bottle, I think they're like the same brand. And I just grabbed this coconut milk bottle when I went to re-up on my shampoo, assuming that it would be very similar to the coconut curls bottle. But this shampoo, the coconut milk shampoo, does not smell anything like the other shampoo, and it doesn't smell anything like coconut either, at least not in my experience of coconuts. This coconut milk shampoo actually smells exactly like Play-Doh, which is a really weird scent for not only shampoo, but I feel like it's a weird scent for my hair. Uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like it makes my hair feel and look good, I'm fine with that, but I'm afraid that someone's going to be like near me and get a whiff of it and be like, why do you smell like Play-Doh? Also, it is weird sometimes how different coconut milk and coconut water is. And I'm not talking about the shampoo anymore, but I remember when I was a little kid in the Philippines, sometimes uh, like the locals, the people who lived there, I don't know, if, is it appropriate to call them natives? The Filipinos, they would they had this incredible way of like cutting these notches into the coconut tree so that they could shimmy up them really fast. And then they'd use their machetes to cut down coconuts. And then they'd 
chop the husks off and then cut a little hole in the top and then they'd pass around the coconut and we'd all take turns sipping, uh, I don't know, in this case, if it was milk or water out of the inside. I don't know which one it was. I think it was, I mean, we called it coconut milk, but I don't know what the difference is. Is, is coconut milk or water? Because these are both things, right? Does this depend on like maybe the ripeness of the coconut? I'm not sure, but I remember it was delicious. And then they would cut, after we drank it all, they would cut the coconut in half and then um, cut little, little like chunks of the outside of the coconut off to use as scoops to eat the meat of the coconut out, like the white part, right? Oh, that was so good. Just like fresh coconut right out of the shell. Oh, those are good memories. Also, one other tradition I didn't partake in, partake in that they would do just like that was they loved catching huge red fire ants and they would eat the the butts. They'd just like munch on the, the butts of the huge these huge red fire ants. Like that was like a delicacy. I didn't I didn't do that with them. That part I like I <laughs> I'd, I I wasn't that <laughs> quite that uh ingratiated into the society, I guess. <laughs> Um, also in other news, sometimes, uh, here's another pro tip, uh, besides the fact that you can wear leggings around the house and they're very comfortable, uh, is that if you ever, um, live alone in a house like I do and you feel a little bit alone, one thing I've found that I can do is sometimes I leave some music on in another room and I think I feel a little bit less, uh, de I don't know, I don't really feel depressed, I don't think, but I feel like a little bit less alone, just if there's like sounds coming from another room, because there's, my, my brain like associates sounds coming from another room with other people being in the house, right? Because that's how, like when I was growing up, there were other people in the house, and they made sounds. So sometimes I just put on like some music playing in the other room as I work in this room. And, and then it's kind of nice because then it's just also just like background music and it's not as uh, intrusive in, in, the, in the front of my mind. Uh, but also I think maybe that's why like I'm doing like I have the dryer going right now. It's also kind of like comforting to do laundry because I can hear the dryer or the washing machine going in another room. And that makes it kind of feel like there's a little bit of like hustle and bustle, right? Maybe somehow I get like a little bit of serotonin or dopamine or something just from not total silence, I guess. Hmm. And finally, I will say that interestingly enough, I found out that I can look up on my city's like utility page. I can look up anybody's water bill. Do you think that is an, an intended functionality? Like there's a place where you can look up a water bill just by address. I can type in any address and then click on uh, the invoice. You can like click on pay invoice, but you can just look at the invoice and it shows how much water they used, how much they pay, if their auto pay is enabled, whose name is on it, uh, stuff like that. Which I mean, I guess like it doesn't give away any super sensitive info besides like who lives there, who's paying it. Uh I don't know. It's just kind of weird to me. I didn't really expect it. I just can't tell if it's like a normal feature to be able to look up other people's water bills or if uh, it's like a flaw in their security, you know? Anyways, that's all I have to say today. Thanks for watching, listening. Y'all are great. Okay. All right. All right. Goodbye.